So here's my fluid mechanics book from college, and uh, let's see what they show for Venturi meters. So here's the, uh, the first mention of it in the book. You can see the large tube constricting down, then back to the larger diameter in order to generate a, a differential pressure. You can also see that circular flow is occurring up top and you're getting turbulent flows. If I go a little later in the book, we find a whole chapter on just pipe flow measurement. And you see once again a constriction here, another orifice plate, and here's another constriction here where we're going from a larger diameter to a smaller diameter and back in order to find the, uh, the differential pressure. So what are we noticing? Well, if we remember back to Bernoulli, okay, we can say that there's going to be a relationship between the delta P and the, um, the flow rate of the fluid in the pipe. And the relationship between those two is going to be a square root relationship. We can build a venturi meter and from what we just saw you would normally take a larger diameter pipe, bring it down, constrict it to a smaller diameter pipe, and back to the larger diameter. And what you would do is you would hook your differential pressure meter over here because you're going to have a lower pressure in the small diameter and a higher pressure in the larger diameter according to Bernoulli. Okay, But the reality is you don't need to do it this way. You don't need to have the contraction. Instead, what we can do is continue this pipe out and make this the standard diameter pipe. and continue it out that way. So rather than doing a contraction back to the larger diameter, okay, I'm going to do a bulge pipe and go from a low pressure in this diameter to a high pressure in this diameter. Okay? And in that way I can get a flow uh, readout on my differential pressure meter. Now this concept of going to a bulge is something that is never taught. It is never shown in your fluid mechanics book. It's never shown in your fluid dynamics book. Instead, all you're ever shown is the fact that you have to go from a larger pipe down to a smaller pipe, back up to the larger pipe. That leads to a lot of potential problems. Let me show you a simulation of what this can do. The first example here shows a classic contraction type venturi meter in which you have a larger diameter pipe constricting down to a smaller diameter pipe. In the simulation you can see the velocity goes from a slower moving fluid to a faster moving fluid. This is due to the contraction of the piping system. The velocity is dictated by the color in the simulation showing that a blue velocity is a slow velocity and red is fast. What you'll notice is on the exit side of the Venturi meter, we have a negative pressure occurring. And this relates to energy losses in the piping system and can lead to problems such as cavitation if placed too closely to pumps. The next example is the opposite. This is the expansion type Venturi meter. And it shows a smaller diameter pipe expanding to a larger diameter pipe and back down to the smaller diameter pipe. One thing to remember is the entrance pipe in this example is the same diameter as the entrance pipe in the first example. The only difference is instead of a increase in diameter, we had a decrease in diameter for the last example. Another thing to keep in mind is the angle in which the pipe is expanded is the same as the angle as the pipe was decreased in the last example. After analyzing this pipe system, what you'll notice is we have fewer energy losses throughout the system. We have fewer negative pressures occurring, and we have a more laminar flow occurring throughout the piping system. So this is a good simulation to show that an expansion type venturi meter really does work. 
but let's hook it up in real life and see if we can get the same results to occur. Alright, so here's the setup. Uh, this gauge is from Differential Pressure Plus Incorporated. Um, the larger diameter pipe is creating a high pressure, so we'll be going to the higher pressure end. The smaller diameter pipe is creating a low pressure, so we'll go to the low pressure end. Uh, you can see that I'm measuring in inches of water for a differential pressure that can then be turned into a flow rate. Uh, you can see the back here and the corresponding attachments. This is a plastic model. Um, it has a magnetic piston on the inside that pushes on a diaphragm, which allows you to create a readout on the front by a magnetic coupling. Mm-hmm.